Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this old computer from 1992, but we're also going to be looking at a new system that I just built in 2021. So a 30 year difference between these two machines and I thought it would be interesting to just go over the various components that make up such a machine and see how they compare to their 1992 counterparts because a lot has changed obviously in 30 years. So I thought it would make a fun video, so let's kick things off here. But first a word from our sponsor. And this video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full feature custom PCB prototyping service. If you need PCB prototypes, SMD stencils, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs or advanced PCBs, PCBWay has got you covered. Shipping to more than 170 countries worldwide, processing thousands of PCB orders a day, PCBWay combines excellent pricing with excellent customer service. Check out their website to get a quote or get in touch with their friendly support staff if you have any more questions. But now, back to the task at hand with our 386 from 1992. With an optical CD-ROM drive, 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive, 3 and a half inch disk drive, a turbo button, 40 megahertz clock speed, an awesome little machine. And also if you look at the components that make up a machine like this, you can see that we have lots of expansion cards here. We have the memory, we have the motherboard, and it will be really interesting to see how they stack up against the 2021 machine. And the 2021 machine is based off of the AMD Ryzen platform. So we're going to be taking a look at that. We're also going to be taking a look at the motherboard that powers this system the RAM, the power supply, and also the case that goes with this PC build. So let's start by turning on both machines. Now the AMD Ryzen 5 here, as soon as you turn it on, you are welcomed with this nice little LED uh, glow. Windows boots up in a matter of seconds. As soon as you see the BIOS splash screen, you are entering the Windows 10 desktop almost immediately. Whereas on the 386, you need a little bit more patience, but you get this nice little power button and the roar of the machine as it wakes up, the memory count, the initialization of the disk drives, and then of course the infamous beep that starts the machine. Now let's take a look at how it looks on the monitor. You see the Trident TVGA bio screen popping up, the four megabyte memory count, and then it will just slowly boot into MS-DOS. You can see the 40 megahertz CPU clock here. It is testing its memory and then it drops you into the MS-DOS prompt. Now, of course, we've also seen a lot of evolution in the case design of personal computers. At the turn of the century, people started moving away from these beige towers to more grayish black style towers like the one you see on the right. If you look at the back of the computer case, you also saw lots of expansion cards here for additional functionality where nowadays, you know, basically everything is embedded on the motherboard. We also have a lot of bling now on these new cases, lots of LED strips both on the exterior but also internally in the PC in system fans, CPU fans, memory, motherboard. But on our trusted 386 we also had an LED panel here for indicating the speed of the CPU with the infamous turbo button functionality. And the clunky power button of course. In terms of operating system, so we already saw the machine booting into MS-DOS, but we also have Microsoft Windows 3.11 here on this 386, which runs absolutely fine with its 4 megabyte memory. Released in 1992, it's crazy to believe that there is almost a 30 year gap between this version of Windows and the version of Windows installed on the AMD Ryzen, which is Windows 10, released in 2015, but still a uh, operating system of choice for a lot of PC enthusiasts. 
with the introduction of these uh, tempered glass panels on the side here cable management became very important which is obvious in this build here there is very little cables here and everything is managed on the back side of the computer hidden away from sight which is obviously not the case in our 386 here where cable management wasn't really a priority in the early 90s you also didn't have a lot of room to do any cable management and the pc cases definitely weren't up to the task as there was no way to to manage your cables basically and you ended up with a big mess like this because obviously you also had a lot of expansion cards on these computers. For example, here we have an IO controller card, which is needed for the floppy disks and the hard drive. We also needed a separate video card, of course, with this Trident featuring one megabyte of video memory. In terms of video output, there were few options and VGA was the de facto standard. We also have a proprietary Mitsumi CD-ROM interface card for our legacy Mitsumi CD-ROM drive. We have a 3COM networking card featuring 10 megabyte Ethernet. And finally, we also have a sound card with this Creative Sound Blaster 16. Leaving us with the motherboard here, as you can see. And that's what we're going to be looking at now. And we're going to be start with this B45 Tomahawk Max 2 motherboard for the Ryzen platform in our new build. I mean, just look at this box art that we have here. Flash BIOS, AMD Turbo, Audio Boost, Turbo M2, and Mystic Light. Very inviting indeed. And I mean, these new motherboards are pretty sleek in this nice matte black here. We have some familiar components like the RAM slots and the power connector, the expansion slots. But still, I mean, a big difference between a new motherboard and the motherboard here from our 386. Now, this motherboard is a pretty small form factor as your typical 386 motherboard back in the day would have been substantially larger. I mean, just look at the difference here between these two 386 motherboards. Another thing that both motherboards share is these front side panel connectors. And this is a source of frustration for many PC builders as, you know, finding out where to put the power button and the reset button and the LEDs is still pretty painful and non-standardized. Now, time to take a look at the CPU we used for our new build. And this is an AMD 5 5600G series with integrated graphics. Now inside the box, we not only have the CPU, but we also have the CPU cooler from AMD, which is ready for use with thermal paste already applied. And this CPU will definitely need some air cooling because this is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.9 GHz and a boost clock of 4.4 GHz. It also has a TDP of 65 watts and it has integrated graphics. And when you compare it to our little AMD 386SX40 here, which obviously has one core, one thread, and running at a measly 40 megahertz, you can see that there is a big difference between the two. Now, another area where we've seen a lot of evolution is memory. This new build has DDR4 memory and for the actual RAM sticks, we have opted for this Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigabytes of memory running at 3.2 gigahertz. And if you look at these sticks, obviously we have some bling here because these are RGB modules. And just look at the size of these things compared to the four slots that we have on our 386 motherboard. On the 386, we have four megabytes in total. So four sticks of one megabyte each. And if you just compare these sticks to the Corsair chips in our new build, I mean, just look at the difference here. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory versus four megabytes of single inline memory. 
Now a quick word on expansion slots on these new motherboards, which are typically not really needed, especially if you have a CPU with integrated graphics, there's really no need to add additional expansion cards. A big difference, of course, with our 1992 computer, where we will be making use of the 16-bit ISA slots for our sound card, our proprietary CD-ROM interface card, our networking card, video card, and I.O. card for the floppy disks, hard drive, and the serial and parallel ports. All of which is of course not needed in our new build as the motherboard has everything built in. So USB ports, video output ports, other USB ports, networking, USB type C and audio. So the only integrated connector on the 386 motherboard is in fact a keyboard connector. Now another area where bigger seems to be better is the power supply units with lots of wattages being available like for example this 750 watt power supply from Corsair, a modular power supply meaning that you get the cables in this little bag here and you can just use the cables that you need making sure that you have some decent cable management. Now 750 watts is overkill for this machine as even for heavy gaming you will barely reach 300 watts. In our 1992 386 machine we have a 275 watt power supply and that proved to be more than enough either for later generation CPUs like the 486, the Pentiums and even the Pentium 2s. Now to provide power to our new system, we will obviously use the ATX power connector on our motherboard, but we also need to plug in this 8-pin CPU cable just to make sure that we are able to supply enough power to the CPU. Now this is in theory capable of delivering up to 140 something watts, which is definitely sufficient for this CPU. On our 1992 machine, we don't have an ATX power supply, but we have an AT style power supply, meaning we have two plugs like this, which are very annoying to put in their uh, connector. And you also need to make sure that you uh, put them in the correct orientation, meaning the black wires need to be adjacent to one another. Otherwise, you will see some fireworks. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the Ami BIOS on the new build. And just look at this thing. This is like from some kind of science fiction movie. I mean, granted, it has been 15 years since I have used a brand new PC, but just look at this thing here. Everything is configurable from CPU, memory, storage, fan speeds, BIOS updates, uh, networking, audio, I mean, you can set different hardware profiles for your CPU coolers, for water cooling pumps. You can uh, do overclocking, all kinds of stuff here on this fancy Ami BIOS. And if we go back to our 1992 386 machine, which also contains an Ami BIOS, by the way, just look at the difference here. I mean, look at these iconic purple green colors. It's obviously very limited what you can configure here. You have the date, time, the hard drive, the disk drives, and some additional settings here. But yeah, very basic, but very recognizable for anybody who has dealt with computers in the 90s. Computer storage is also one of those things that has evolved dramatically. I mean, this is a Kingston 500 gigabyte MVNE PCI Express SSD. It has a uh, 3.1 gigabyte per second read speed, which is quite phenomenal when you compare it to uh, traditional uh, hard drives. I mean, it's very small. It snugs in really nicely into this little connector here on the motherboard. It's a really clean solution. And compare that to your, you know, 5,400 RPM Western Digital Caviar Drive, 340 megabytes with approximately, I think, about a five megabyte uh, read write transfer rate. So, yeah. Really mind-boggling to see just how much this uh, computer hardware has evolved. And of course, in order to start using it, you needed to have one of these, which is one of those I.O. controllers for not only the hard drive, but also the floppy disk drive, serial port, and parallel port.
Now what our 1992 machine did have was lots of options for removable storage. We had an optical drive here which would take up to 650 megabyte CD-ROM drives, one of the first CD-ROM drives in a computer. We also had five and a quarter inch floppy disk drives capable of storing from 360 kilobytes all the way up to 1.2 megabytes. And then of course the three and a half inch floppy disk capable of storing somewhere between 720 kilobytes up to 1.44 megabytes. Now on our new build, we don't have any of that, but we do have USB ports obviously, which is the preferred method for removable storage. And that about wraps it up for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed this little comparison between the 1992 386 computer and the 2021 Ryzen 5600G. If you like this kind of videos, please uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment in a comment section below, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I really hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.